Hello, this is Professor Nesheba, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, intermolecular interactions. So here, this first slide, um, I'm showing this to you to define some terms. So intermolecular means that we're talking about maybe two different covalent molecules, or two atoms, or two ions. Um, and uh, another term that we haven't uh, discussed is uh, what an ion is. An ion is an atom or molecule that has an extra negative charge, in which case we call it an anion, or an extra positive charge, in which case we call it a cation. And the interaction between them um, means that we're talking about uh, an attractive force, something that draws them together, or, or a repulsive force that pushes them apart, and sometimes a reorienting force that would cause an, um, a molecule to twist. Now the big divide that uh, we can the, make, the big distinction, is that there are two primary kinds of intermolecular interactions. One of them is called, uh, we're calling surface effects, and the other one we're calling um, electrostatic effects. So, uh, the next uh, topic then, I just want to explore a little bit of uh, surface effects. And here we talk about repulsion and stickiness. So, first uh, let's just talk about surfaces. For atoms, we often talk about what's called the van der Waals radius, and uh, in Spartan that's what the space filling model shows and uh, that's just the radius of one of these argon uh, uh, atoms. Now for molecules we've already constructed these molecular van der Waals surfaces. They're called, uh, we've actually colored them with charge, in which case we call them an electrostatic potential mapping, but the surface itself is called the van der Waals surface. Now uh, the key idea there is that uh, if you try to bring two molecules or atoms together closer than the van der Waals radius or the surface uh, would indicate if they start to overlap, then uh, that's a surface repulsion and uh, that's what's being indicated here. So the idea is that if you start these two atoms uh, closer than their van der Waals radius, and then just kind of uh, imagine letting go, then what will happen is that they'll spread apart, so that's repulsion, um, and, uh, uh, and then they will arrive at this equilibrium point. On the other hand, if you start a little bit too far apart, then they will experience attractive forces and draw into each other, and once again reaching this equilibrium point. And so the equilibrium point is where the uh, the, the uh, the surface repulsion and the stickiness uh, between these two atoms uh, are in balance, and that's kind of where they where they like to be. Now, uh, other names for stickiness that you probably uh, may have uh, encountered, uh, sometimes they're called London forces, sometimes London dispersion, induced dipole, induced dipole, van der Waals, we'll just call it stickiness. Now, um, the uh, second part of that big divide is what I uh, called electrostatic interactions. Uh, basically, it's opposite charges attract, like uh, you've encountered this sometimes, perhaps when you pull socks out of a clothes dryer, uh, they stick together. That's because there's opposite charges on the two socks. Uh, also, like charges, that is uh, positive positive or negative negative charges, uh, tend to uh, repel each other. So here we have an attractive electrostatic force between those two ions, and here we have a repulsive electrostatic force between same charge ions. Now another point about this though is that ions tend to reorient nearby molecules that are polar, and I just kind of want to show this to you. Here's a, here's a chloride ion. It's negative, so it tends to tug on the positive part of that water molecule. Uh, on the other hand, that same ion tends to push away the negative part of that of that uh, polar mo water molecule. So it'll tend to like put a twisting, torquing uh, force on that uh, water molecule to, to try to reorient it. Now, as it turns out, polar molecules also reorient nearby polar molecules that are also polar. So here's a polar molecule, another one just like it, but... Uh, same deal though, here's the negative part of this water molecule which will tug on that positive part, the hydrogen of that other water molecule, pulling it toward it at the same time that it pushes away, repels the negative part of that other water molecule. 
so once again, we have a twisting or a reorienting of that, of that second molecule. The first case here, uh, you might have run across this term before. It's called an ion-dipole interaction. And here it's a dipole-dipole interaction. Um, uh, but uh, the, same, the result is the same in this case. It's a, a reorienting of the second molecule. Now you can also get combination of electrostatic and surface effects. So for example, here I have an electrostatic, an attractive force, electrostatic between those two ions, that cation and that anion. And if you just imagine that you had them in this position and then you let them go, well then they would of course be attracted to each other, but they won't dive into each other because now they encounter this van der Waals repulsion of the fact that they, these two things have their own van der Waals radii. And also, you know, once they get into that equilibrium point, they uh, start to stick to each other. So, so that's a kind of a combination of, of effects that we're looking at. Uh, here's another story. Uh, here we have that same water molecule trying to reorient the second water molecule uh, through an electrostatic uh, reorienting force. So here I've redrawn the second water molecule so that it's been reoriented. And it's kind of rotated around and now we have that negative charge talking to that positive charge that's that's that are closest to each other so they will tend to be attractive and uh, so that'll draw them in together and then once they are together now that they're at their equilibrium point they won't uh, get any closer because they got the van der Waals surfaces that uh, would have to overlap and then of course um, they'll start to stick to each other so another point I just want to emphasize, there is always sticking uh, at the end of the day once, they, once molecules get pretty close together. Okay, another concept that's pretty important is called the range of the attraction. So all forces, the uh, surface effects, electrostatic effects, they have a typical range. Um, so here I'm just imagining that I've got uh, sodium and chloride at their equilibrium point. I could imagine pulling them apart a little bit out almost to what we call the electrostatic attraction range but if I then let them go they would just return back to the equilibrium point so that distance you know where it's almost to the point where it's too far but it still pulls itself back to its original equilibrium point we would just call that distance between the chloride and the sodium to be you know the range of the attraction you know, as a as a counterpoint, if I pull them apart even farther past the uh, this thing that we're going to call the electrostatic range, now they're so far apart they don't even know each other is there, and so now we've pulled them apart entirely. Now, um, there's one more uh, one more thought here. It's called the strength of the uh, attraction. So we'll just call the intermolecular bond energy the energy that you would have to put in to pull that sodium away from that chloride, which of course are being attracted to each other by this ion-ion electrostatic and sticking attractions. Okay, I imagine I pulled them uh, apart entirely. As it turns out, uh, that takes a lot of energy, and we would say that the intermolecular bond energy, the energy required to pull them apart, is, you know, maybe around 100 kilojoules per mole, which is the unit we're, we're, we're going to use. On the other hand, I've got these dipole-dipole and sticking interactions, and I pull those two water molecules apart. Turns out that takes a middling kind of energy. Uh, this is, turns out to be around 25 kilojoules per mole, not as big as 100. And now I go back to my two uh, argon atoms. Those are only held by, together by sticking attractions. There's no electrostatics going on. Pull them apart entirely. Turns out that's in the low range, maybe, you know, one kilojoule per mole or something like that. Uh, these these numbers all vary. And uh, so to summarize the uh, the concept summary, we've talked about anions and cations. We've talked about attractive, repulsive, and reorienting forces. We talked about surface stickiness and how it arrives at an equilibrium point. And then we also talked about electrostatic attractions and repulsions. We touched on the range of interactions. Uh, which is the distance uh, that you can bring them out to and they would still fill each other, but if you take them past that range, then they don't see each other. And then finally, the strength of the attractions, that's how much energy it takes to pull two parts of it uh, apart.